Hi folks, I'm Anvesh Kumar Sahu. I'm a visual designer and a technical artist. I have been uh, working as a digital artist for the last seven, eight years. So I actually started out quite early, around the time I was 18, 19. I was a part of my design team at Triple IT Delhi and uh, they got me introduced to all these different softwares and um, I have of course been an artist all my life. I started drawing like when I was two or three and then when I realized that you know I have so many different possibilities with technology and you know leveraging uh, a software and just not being uh, not having to you know redraw things for example if I'm drawing a pattern I just draw like one pattern and I can just you know replicate it very easily and that sort of saves time I was like this is a great way of being able to produce a lot of work in very limited amount of time and then sharing that work with the world so I was like you know I definitely want to be in this space I want to create more work and we'll see how things unfold and uh, of course uh, you know I have always been um, well not always but I um, have been uh, an out and proud gay man uh, for, for, for quite some time now. I actually came out quite early around the time I was 16 and uh, I realized that you know digital art sort of gave me that refuge and uh, it provided me a space and a channel through which I can showcase not just you know uh, what I had learned as an artist over the years but also I can also share my story with my work. And uh, I believe that is exactly why my work has sort of resonated so well with the community and the people who look at my work because uh, they, they find a certain element of relatability and I truly believe that, you know, uh, just because I happen to be gay does not in any way mean that my experience is completely unique. In fact, rather I believe that we are all misfits in some way and uh, um, which is why perhaps, you know, Everybody has connected so well to the work that I do and appreciated so it so much. Um, so yeah, I mean, uh, growing up, I was I was ex extremely heavily bullied. Uh, I was always mocked at. I never understood, you know, why everybody uh, looks down upon me or or mocks me. Um, and I still remember this very one uh, this particular instance where you know I rose uh, my hand. Uh, I raised my hand uh, in, in the classroom to, to answer a question and one of my friends, he reached out to me and he was like, you know, why do you raise your hand like a girl? And uh, those were the kind of remarks that would sort of throw me off and I'd be like, uh, I don't know why you're asking me these questions because I don't know or understand when you say I talk like a girl because I'm just talking like myself to be very honest. And uh, it was a lot of confusion and a lot of frustration over the years. Uh, and therefore, uh, you know, art sort of provided that, you know, refuge to me. And uh, again, you know, with this digital art, you know, leveraging technology the right way, I was able to learn a lot more about the community, about different artists as well. And I think that's something that I love about, you know, being a part of this community, that I get to learn something new, uh, not just about my skill, but also, you know, uh, when it comes to learning about life in general. So I actually heard about crypto around the time I was in my second or third year of engineering. So I might have been like 19, 20. And uh, I uh, did my bachelor's uh, from IIIT Delhi in electronics and communication engineering. So I was of course sort of surrounded by uh, these amazing, you know, coders and programmers and uh, uh, they were obsessed with the technology. And I didn't actually grow up, you know, being very fond of technology, but being in a space where there are so many folks who are so excited about it, you start questioning yourself, you know, you become very inquisitive and you start questioning, okay, how does this happen? How did that happen? What is a Bitcoin? Why did my friend invest in a Bitcoin? So that sort of gave me uh, like my first introduction to cryptocurrency, understanding blockchain, understanding uh, the security issues, because back then there were some, you know, people who were getting uh, uh, sort of, they were getting into these, uh, uh, like fraudulent claims and all of that sort so all of that sort of things and um, they were a little scared of there was a certain sense of fear initially uh, but I realized of course you know um, I think um, also of course through my friends of course we also had a uh, related course where we were told that you know this is a very secure uh, way of actually sort of you know exchanging uh, you know NFT say for example or you know uh, this is a very safe and secure way of 
of um, actually exchanging money. So I was like, okay, this is this is something that I would want to know more about, and that's that's genuinely how I got introduced to the world of crypto and cryptocurrency. So um, I actually started out, of course, like I said, with digital art way back in 2013, 2014. And then um, I think it was around the last year when during the pandemic uh, that, you know, virtual galleries sort of start becoming a bigger deal. And of course, uh, I've been following people for a very long time. Uh, for all those who do not know, he's like this massive, uh, very famous NFT artist. Uh, he's like an NFT rock star. Uh, Beeple is the pen name of uh, of the artist Mike uh, Winkleman and uh, he creates these really interesting uh, imageries. They're sometimes very very interesting actually and he sometimes come up, comes up with some really outrageous and really like crazy art and uh, it's always you know he always surprises you so he's someone I've, I've, I have looked up to in a lot of ways uh, and and I think through him I got to know and was introduced to NFTs and then recently um, another artist who I follow Amrit Pal Singh uh, he actually uh, started he got onto the NFT plat marketplace as well and he started selling his NFTs and I think that was the uh, the tipping, po tipping point where I realized that okay now there are Indian artists who are getting into the space so I need to know what's happening and of course Last year was also the first year when I started working full time. So I was becoming a little financially independent. So I was like, you know, now I can sort of plan how I want to go ahead with this. So I went ahead on, on the internet and, you know, started looking, off, uh, looking out for, you know, um, every possible information on non-punchable tokens. And, and then I, of course, uh, you know, realized, you know, learned more about, you know, MetaMask, or Zerex, or Finance, all these different platforms. Um, I set up my first MetaMask wallet and read about different marketplaces. And of course, I started out with, you know, open marketplaces first of, uh, to begin with. Uh, so OpenSea, Redable, these are the first places where I put out my first NFTs. And uh, it was just interesting. I was like, you know, this is a great place and uh, this is a great community to be a part of. And I've always been, you know, pro uh, artists making good amount of money. <laughs> so I remember even when I had started out, my father was very apprehensive. He was like, you know, you, you're going to be very poor and all of that. And I said, don't worry, like, I'm going to make sure that no matter what happens, I'm going to be a rich artist. I'm not going to be a poor artist. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just went ahead with it and uh, I actually, even before getting into NFTs, I mean, I used to make uh, wedding invites. So that was actually one of another one of my you know major sources of income. And uh, it's difficult. It's a, I'm not going to say that, you know, being an artist is very easy. It is a difficult space to be sometimes, but uh, you just, you know, you, you have to be perseverant. You know, any job for that matter has its own set of, you know, uh, you know pros and cons and uh, you sort of maneuver your way through somehow and uh, NFT has has in a lot of ways really empowered artists like me where we can actually put out our work and we can I mean earlier as, as an artist you know wanting to get your work out in a renowned gallery was a thing of uh, it was so difficult to actually get to any marketplace and then you now we are in a space where I'm just so grateful that you know um, we have the access to uh, this marketplace, this massive marketplace. You just have to be really, really good at your work. You have to prove your metal, and then people are going to take take notice of your work. I mean, the way Vazirex has actually reached out. I mean, I use Vazirex myself um, for buying and selling uh, USDTs. So this is incredible that uh, the team has reached out, and they, they think my story is is important enough and is relevant enough to be to be shared with the viewers. So yeah, very, very grateful about that. So a lot of uh, what I have learned about NFT is via reading articles of different artists. And like I said, I do follow Amrit Pal Singh and I keep looking at his blogs and I keep reading his articles. Of course, there are many other um, artists around the world who I follow on Twitter, I keep reading their tweets and understanding from the from the articles and blogs as well, not just tweets, of course. Uh, but uh, yeah, I just keep reading and understanding how this entire space really functions. Um, and uh, one of the first things that actually um, got me interested was the fact that you know um, this, the decentralized ledger technology that stores you know um, 
the proof and the history of a digital asset. So this is a great way of actually archiving your data and uh, archiving our works as an as, as an artist, especially when sometimes, you know, you post your work on Instagram and someone sends you like a DM and they're like, uh, you know what, I saw your artwork being posted here or there. And you realize that, you know, people have stolen your artwork and they're using it for commercial purposes. So this is a great way of making sure that, you know, your work is secure on the blockchain and you know who actually owns it. So a fabulous way of archiving our works as artists. So that is probably one of the biggest ways in which we are being empowered. And uh, yeah, I mean, when I got to know about it, I was like, this, this, there are so many things and there are, in fact, I'm, I'm always learning something new about crypto art and this entire space in general. Um, there is always something new and interesting that's coming up. It has its own set of challenges as well. Um, however, um, I, I believe that you know information is something that is uh, that that really can empower you uh, in the right way if you choose for it to empower you the right way. So uh, just keep reading and keep uh, exploring, and and things will fall into place eventually. And I do believe that you know NFT has this massive uh, potential to really empower everybody um, around the world, and and that technology truly is the great equalizer. So. Um, NFT is another space where I, where I do believe in a, in a lot of ways it is it is an equalizer. Of course, I mean there are a lot of conversations about you know how um, it's difficult to sort of break through, uh, which I totally understand. Um, I mean I came from nowhere at all, but I just kept working towards my work, and I just that was my focus, and I think that has really what um, picked up and really taken interest in uh, the audience that I make my work for. I mean today I don't make my art only for myself. But I make it for them. I make make it so that I can represent their stories as well. Um, so yeah, in overall, in general, I do believe that NFTs have a massive potential which needs to be leveraged. When it comes to the Pride community, I have so many things to say, to be very honest. And um, to begin with, uh, I would just like to send out this message that, you know, we as a community, we have been ostracized and stigmatized and othered for such a long time and we've been misrepresented for such a long time that it can be very difficult for us as human beings to sometimes love ourselves and find ourselves beautiful. Um, I mean, in popular culture, you still see remarks of, you know, people calling you, calling us ugly and calling us undesirable. And uh, these are things that need to change. And I know that all of that will change, but um, we can also, you know, do our bit uh, so, if you're someone from the QA community, when you look at yourself uh, in the mirror, uh, you should look at an individual who you truly love and you must fall in love with that person because you truly deserve all that respect, all the, um, you know, you, you deserve to live a dignified life, which is our fundamental right. And uh, it will begin, all that, all that, all those great things in life will happen. It always gets better, but it has to start somewhere from within, from you and the love and the positivity will spread through and uh, I always, I, I truly believe that as a person, as a queer person who's working at the intersection of tech and design, um, like I said, technology is a massive uh, equalizer and uh, I truly believe that we have a lot of potential, especially a lot of us are, you know, we are actually in, in all different kinds of fields. We are, you know, doctors, engineers, artists, designers, uh, lawyers, we're everywhere. And uh, I believe that the queer community, especially because of our, you know, some in some ways our unique experiences growing up, uh, we become very resilient uh, and uh, we have a lot of potential. We have a lot of eagerness to show our work and to um, discuss our work and to look at, you know, look and learn from other people's work. So I do believe that we can definitely leverage a platform uh, like the NFT space or, you know, cryptocurrency and, and really understand this the space and leverage it for to make ourselves uh, financially independent and eventually socially independent as well uh, in fact once i realized that you know once i was becoming once i become more and more independent financially uh, the society sort of in some ways uh, starts respecting me as well um, of course i mean it should not ideally be that way i mean the society should anyway respect you for the work you do uh, but I do believe that financial independence makes you also personally very confident and uh, crypto is a great space to be. So go ahead and explore and uh, I hope for really many, many great things to happen in this, in this space. So yeah, lots of love. Peace out.